let me start tonight by expressing four major thoughts as far as longevity is concerned number one please write it down the first thing i want you to know tonight ladies and gentlemen people of god is that god's desire and god's plan for the saints in christ and for men is to live our lives on earth to its fullest god's plan god's ultimate plan and ultimate desire for you and for me is that we live our lives here on earth to its fullest that means it is not the plan of god that our lives be cut short it is not the plan of god that we do not finish our cause point number one it is god's desire and it is god's plan for us in christ especially that we live our lives and we fulfill our days to its fullest psalm 139 and verse 16 please give us new international version if we can find that 139 verse 16 psalm 139 everyone please read it says It says, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me. Someone say, ordained for me. Ordained. Were written in your book before one of them came to be. That means it was not just the idea of my parents. The Bible says that when you showed up, before you showed up, there were days that were ordained for you. Now, whether you will fulfill those days or not is a separate issue. But you know for a fact, based on the authority of Scripture, that there are days that have been ordained and have been earmarked for you. If you believe that, say amen. amen. So it is God's desire that we live our lives to the fullest. John 10.10, 10, Jesus was speaking and he said, The thief cometh not. But for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Notice he never said to steal or to kill or to destroy. He wants to do all. In addition to stealing, he wants to kill. In addition to killing, he wants to destroy. He says, but I am come that ye might have life. Help me please. And that you will have it more abundantly. Point number two. So we have established first and foremost that it is God's idea and that it is consistent with the will of God that men and especially the saints in light fulfill their days. Point number two. The Bible clearly reveals to us that it is possible for an individual to die before his or her time. Haven't established the fact that it is the will of God for us to fulfill our days. The Bible is also not silent as to the possibility of people dying before their time. In fact, the Bible also tells us that days and years can be added, days and years can be subtracted. Is someone learning? So the Bible tells us. That we can die before our time if we do not engage the keys that guarantee long life. Ecclesiastes 7.17. Ecclesiastes 7.17. It says, be not overmuch wicked, neither be thou foolish. He said, why shouldest thou die before thy time? A man can die before his time. I forbid that from happening to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Psalm 55 and verse 23. The Bible says, But thou, O God, shalt bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days. He says, But I will trust in you. 
That means the psalmist is praying. He said, Lord, cut their lives into half so that I can find peace. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 13. Verse 33. Deuteronomy 5, 33. He said, Ye shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you, that ye may live, and that it may be well with you, and that ye may prolong your days. Is that in your Bible? Prolong your days in the land which ye shall possess. So it is possible for a man's life to be prolonged, and it is possible for a man's life to be cut short. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, from verse 1 and 2 Deuteronomy chapter 6 from verse 1 and 2 please pay attention it says now these are the commandments the statutes the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it verse 2 it says that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command thee thou and thy son and thy son's son all the days of your life to what end that thy days may be prolonged so god is able to prolong days and days can be cut short but generally it is important for you to know that just because god has ordained a predefined period and moment for you it does not mean you will fulfill it this is the second fact that I want you to know number three the Bible clearly reveals that in most cases the Bible clearly reveals that in most cases God is not behind the untimely death especially of the saints write it down please the bible reveals that in most cases underline the word most cases god is not behind god is not behind the saints dying before their time isaiah 65 and verse 20 Isaiah 65 and verse 20, please. It says, There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that had not filled his days. For the child shall die a hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. And so he said there will be no infant of days. In... Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 32. Ezekiel 18 and verse 32. It says, For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord. Wherefore turn yourselves to me and leave. That means as far as I am concerned, I am a giver of life and the sustainer of the same. It is not my will, it is not my intent that people are cut short before their time. Now, notice I said in most cases. You will be surprised that I did not say in all cases. Because as you walk with God, you will find out that there are many things that happen on earth. Are we together? There are conditions in a man's life where death it is not, it's not a, a disadvantage. Jesus himself said, it is more expedient that I go. That means there are conditions where it becomes more expedient than an in, that an individual goes. In one of such cases is when you become the friend of God. There is an implication to being the friend of God. When you are the friend of God, it means you are never allowed to partake of perdition. And if as a friend of God, something will happen to you based on your decisions and it will cut you away from God, he will take you himself. So that you are spared, let the body be corrupted, but that your soul be preserved. It is true. While it is true, listen carefully, 
that God is a God of longevity. There are many conditions upon which God works with the saints, especially people who have made very deep spiritual investment as far as his program is concerned. If anything, is it not in your Bible, Jesus said, all that you have given me, I have kept and none is lost. That means they can be lost. If Jesus said none is lost, he's saying there is a possibility. It was my power that kept them so that none is lost except the son of perdition. And that happened that the scripture might be fulfilled. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. So in most cases, God is not behind the departure of the saints before their time. Jesus clearly showed that he's not, he's not the author of taking people before their time ordinarily. There are three resurrection miracles in the Bible that validates that. Number one was in John chapter 11, resurrecting Lazarus. Question, what exactly did Lazarus do that contributed to the cross that Jesus had to resurrect him? Because we do not see Lazarus necessarily playing any role. So why did Jesus have to go and resurrect Lazarus? The Bible says, oh, how he loved him. And he went to the tomb. He resurrected Lazarus. I hope you know that everyone who came back from the dead later died. So it was not that Jesus did not want them to die. It was that it was not their time. There was a message that that resurrection was bringing. He resurrected Lazarus. Number two, remember Jairus' daughter? Jairus' daughter, you find that I think in Luke chapter 7, beginning from verse 11 downwards, the Bible talks about Jairus who lost his daughter. She was 12 years old. And he went in and said, Thalita kumi, little girl, I say unto you, arise. And she arose and said, please give her food. Jesus himself, the Bible took out time to tell us her age and said 12 years is too small. And Jesus came to resurrect the lady as proof that he wants, he desires, it is consistent with God's will. Now please let me pause here and just make a statement. I know that everyone here, including the person talking, you may have lost someone at one point in your life close to you, deeply close to you, or maybe a distant friend or a relative. You see, in dealing with the matters of the kingdom, you must sustain the maturity to number one, sympathize with the reality on ground, but you must grow in revelation to stand absolute on the truth of God's word with no biases and no prejudices. Are we together? I'm saying this so that on one hand, while I deeply and will always sympathize with all those who have lost loved ones, perhaps there are people who came here and you got a sad news even before coming here. Teaching something like this can be very uncomfortable. But you see, ladies and gentlemen, when it has to do with the truth, the Bible says you can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. Are we together? So you must perceive what I am teaching from the lens of love and the desire to bring the saints to a higher level of perfection. For those who have had loved ones transit, if they are in Christ, find rest. Are we together? Find rest. Sadly and unfortunately for those who died without Christ, there is no need crying and regretting over their transition. Now we are mandated, we who are alive, are we together? The greatest consolation for that pain of losing a loved one without Christ is to make up your mind. There are people who get sick, unfortunately, and inflicted with viruses and diseases and they will tell themselves i will not die alone have you heard of such kind of things and then they will say i must give it to as many people that means there is somebody who can say because i lost one person without christ i must bring ten thousand souls a million souls to jesus christ it is a worthy consolation. One of the ways that we manage pain and tragedy is to turn it into power by making decisions, are we together, that, that now gives people an opportunity to never experience that pain again. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Fact number four. 
Satan, who is called the thief from scripture, is the one who steals, is the one who kills, and the one who destroys. Satan, the one who the Bible identifies as the thief in John 10, 10, is the one who steals, kills, and destroys. That means Satan is directly behind most, if not all, of the untimely death that we experience. Satan, according to the authority of scripture, is the one who steals, he kills, and he destroys. Jesus gives life. So we know for a shorty that most, if not all, of the untimely deaths, the tragic deaths that happen, Satan is directly behind it. Now, please listen. There are strategies that Satan uses to make sure that he separates people from their bodies when it is not their time. For instance, accidents. For instance, sicknesses. And now we have all kinds of mental health issues like suicide. Are we together? I didn't know that these kinds of things used to happen in Nigeria. You know, I just thought because, well, you know, Nigeria has a measure of suffering and people have other issues that really occupy them. I mean, if your child tells you he wants to kill himself, you say, please, just transfer your clothes to someone else first before, you know. <laughs> just joking. But you would not believe how many, especially young people right now, people who go to look for drugs and swallow it because they want to end their lives. I hope you know that suicide is demonic. It's not just a psychological issue. It is, it is the presence of a demonic spirit. And if there's anybody here in that state, your deliverance comes now. In the name of Jesus. Accidents, mental health conditions, respectfully speaking, this mental health thing, that I don't know how that spirit landed in Europe. That spirit is sweeping across Europe. You see vibrant young men and women. Medical doctors will tell you the amount of young people who are getting into mental health states. And the moment you attain that state, the next thing is suicidal thoughts. They just lock themselves up. One time a family called me and said, I need to pray that I think their child locked himself or so and would not open uh, and, and took a knife or so and, and passed a letter behind the door by so 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 time he was going to kill himself. You think it's easy for a person to kill himself? It's a spirit. I'm saying it again. Any family or any generational cause or any pattern that makes people to be suicidal in the name of Jesus Christ whether it is in your life or your family inherited or outsourced through ignorance this night this moment right now you are delivered now every spirit that says kill yourself is of the devil every spirit that says go to the river and fall down enter a well take knife take guns kill yourself swallow whatever kind of go and drug abuse and you would think that it's just for people who are poor people who are downcast intelligent people educated people victims of this spirit how about patterns of diseases please listen I told you about the restoration of the healing anointing before Jesus returns. It is not just my proposition. The word of God attests to it. Those who have gone ahead of us, listen, when we pray for people to be healed, it is more than just a man of God displaying anointing. One of the major and most effective tools that the devil has used through the ages and is even using in this end time to cut short the lives of people. Listen carefully. It's sickness and diseases. Mysterious diseases that have no medical explanation. It looks like cancer, but it's not cancer. It looks like a blood pressure, but it's not blood pressure. 
Thank God for tongue-talking doctors that we have that are helping patients now to make sense of spiritual things. There are many doctors that will call patients aside and say, listen, I am a medical practitioner. I'm bound by the ethics and the conduct of my profession. But let me tell you, I am a man of God and I'm a woman of God. If you know a man of God who is anointed, run there first while we are treating you because this one is more than headache. Hallelujah. Patterns of sickness. Especially when people get to certain age. Now, there are biological realities that are there and, and there's a place to manage them. But listen, let me tell you, it's, it's like there is, an, there is an onslaught of mysterious diseases and infirmities. There are people who cannot eat. I was ministering at the miracle service yesterday and the Lord brought a word about a gentleman, fine young man, and this gentleman, anything he eats, he will throw it up. Are we together? Mysterious sicknesses. A little girl, 13 year old, you know, could not move her fingers like this. Let me tell you the truth. Don't tolerate sickness. Don't tolerate sickness. I repeat, don't tolerate sickness. Apostle, but I'm currently not feeling fine. Don't worry. Thank God for the medical attention. Doctors are instruments of God's mercy. We have a medical stand. They are very professional, qualified doctors sitting and listening. We are, we are a miracle ministry, but we have doctors. Celebrate them. <laughs> Hallelujah. However, we are not fools. We know when this thing is a spirit. Are we together? Yes, sir. And let me speak over someone in the name of Jesus. That disease that has defied medicine. That disease that has defied. Do you know? Listen, before I pray for you, I once ministered to a woman. I could not believe it. If not because I'm surrounded by doctors, I probably would think it's a lie. 33 surgeries. How many? 33. What part of your body is left? 33 surgeries. They remove this, it reappears. They do this one, it appears somewhere. Have you heard people say, I feel something moving in my body. Today is on my head. Tomorrow is on my chest. Let me speak to you. If there is any spirit moving, roaming around your body, in the name of Jesus, the Lord sent you here tonight. I, I break that curse from your life now. I break that curse from your life now. Please sit down. Sickness. How about accidents? I've had the honor of praying for people and visiting a few in the hospital. And let me tell you, don't think it's everyone who has accident that was careless. Some of them will tell you my steering locked. I tried to move it. I was not sleeping. I know someone who just said he was driving and the place just went dark like that. And the next thing he knew, he was in the hospital. Ah, plotters of evil. I pray for someone in the name of Jesus Christ. Every arrow that flies by day, the noisome pestilence, please receive this oath in the name of Jesus Christ. Evil that is plotted against you, it returns back to the devil. Back to the devil. Back to the devil. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The worst flight issue I've had in my life one time, it was a very short journey. I don't know what happened. And it was a very, just a very short distance and we, we were in the air. And that plane, it was as if a spirit just held it. And said, everybody in this plane today, just know that it's over. It was shaking left and right and when the pilot started talking his voice was shaking 
And then I sat down and I said, no, I have no covenant with death, not through a plane. When we landed, everybody clapped. Everybody clapped because people were already thinking, oh God, so this is, was this the plan? When I left home this morning, if it will crash, you will not enter. In the name of Jesus, I say it again, if it will crash, you will not enter. By all means, if it will crash, you will not enter. But if you enter, may it not crash. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. That someone is driving. Now people have their individual carelessness. Don't get, don't get me wrong. There are people who are very careless. But someone is driving and suddenly the car loses control. No brakes. No nothing. The brake is not working again. And here is a trailer coming. No. He shall keep his angels charge over you. Koinonia, hear me. I stand by the God of heaven. We will not bury anybody in this place. Please sit down. It is a thief that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And the major tools that Satan has used is accidents, and sicknesses mysterious inexplainable sicknesses now the one that is already becoming a trend is people just dying in their sleep have you heard of such things that someone just goes in peace and lies down sometimes 10 minutes and you see them jacking trying you know this kind of demonic thing has happened to me before so i understand it has happened to some of you if you are honest you try to wake up and it looks like you cannot wake up. The Bible says, I lay me down and I slept. It said, I wake. Whatever does not want you to wake up, I curse it now. I curse it now. I curse it now. Help them, please. I curse it now. I curse it now. I lay me down and I slept. I wait for the Lord sustained me. Listen, I remember those days. It was, it was almost like a nightmare to go to bed. Once it is evening, I just begin to think, I hope this battle will not come. And you lie down. Sometimes you can be hearing people physically talking, but to wake up, if you are going through this experience, don't keep quiet. I'm praying for you now. It's a demonic thing. It's the spirit of death. I reject it from your life now. I lay me down and I slept. I wait for the Lord sustains me. That you go to bed and wake up. Now hear me, one of the ways that Satan hijacks people is by connecting them to the spirit of the grave using the face of dead people that people have, you have no business, hear me. There is the spirits of just men made perfect, but there is the spirit of death using the faces of men. Anybody visiting you, any stranger manipulating you, coming in your dreams, coming in your sleep, using the faces of people, saying, let us go, let us go. I cut you away from them right now. I cut you away from them right now. I cut you away from them right now. Hear me. Let me pray for every parent here. The spirit that says you will not reap from your children, that with your own hands you will bury your children. I stand by the God who called me and I declare the spirit of untimely death is caused from your children. Caused from your children.
you will not sit down thinking your child is in school then they will send you an evil report listen I'm not trying to play with your emotions we're dealing with serious things here do you know I remember a time sometime in Joss when they said you know children go to play around the river or so during Christmas and one gentleman just went there and that was it just drowned in a river I forbid that from your children sickness accidents and manipulating the realm of the spirit and just taking people away you see let me give you sit down please sit down sit down let me encourage you if you can ah huh? by the grace of God if God grants you the grace and the time one of these days just take 15 minutes walk with a doctor and visit the hospitals even if it's just to bless the patients and say hello something will happen to your mind you will see the reality of evil hallelujah honestly everybody understands this message but the people who really understand this message are doctors and medics because they see this every day accidents you just hear that someone said let me quickly go and um, let me buy something and come back wait for me and the next thing they call you and say are you related to so 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 and so he's gone Don't say it is the will of God. I'm telling you again. The will of God is revealed in his word. So number one. God's plan is longevity for the saints. Number two. The Bible clearly tells us that we can die before our time. That life and years can be added. Life and years can be subtracted. Number three. The Bible also reveals that in most cases, God is not behind the untimely departure of the saints. There are few exceptions to that. And then number four, the Bible identifies Satan as that thief who comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And he uses principally the strategies of accidents circumstantial tragedies or inflicting pain and diseases and sickness to our bodies or walking in fraternity with the realm of the spirit to directly cut short your life 